Hey guys, this is Mary Jam from Mary Jam's Ghostly Adventures, and I'm here with the author of Ghost of Ed Cooper Gregg, which I've done a few stories on. And so now I finally get to meet him and interview him. And I also got the book sign. I can open it. Signed <laughs> copy. So make sure you get the book off Amazon. Amazon.ca and .com, but Amazon for CA Canadians is the best way to go. Yeah, which is cool. And so how did you start Ghost of Vancouver? Oh, well, it started as the website, ghostofvancouver.com, about uh, 11 years ago. Um, I've been interested in ghosts since I was a kid, and uh, been to a lot of haunted sites around the world, mostly in the UK and here in Canada. Um, and I just thought, well, nobody's written a website or, or really done a book about the ghosts of Vancouver. Um, and I thought when we started that I'd get maybe 10 locations if I were lucky. But now I'm up to 32 on the in the book and yeah. 28 on the site. And mm -hmm. many more to research. So there are lots of haunted locations here in Vancouver. And you just posted how many? Uh, how many posted yeah. on, on the site? On the site. Uh, there's 28, I think. Okay. Um, but all the new ones that I find out about, I only put in the book now. Oh, okay. Um, not because I'm being greedy necessarily. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to sell books, right? But yeah. um, also, unfortunately, I get some bloggers around town, especially at Halloween, that steal stuff from me and they don't give me any credit. Uh, some do, yeah. which is really nice, but a lot don't. And um, so I figure, hey, if they need, want to learn out about new locations that I found out about, they're going to have to read, uh, buy the book. Right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And we're behind. We're in Taylor's <laughs> Muse in the entrance. And yeah. you had a story on that one, right? Yes, um, Jailer's Muse, uh, you know, Gastown is the most haunted area of Vancouver, and I would say Jailer's Muse is one of, if not the most haunted location in Gastown, and, and um, other than um, the Waterfront Station, which is super haunted. Yeah. Uh, love Jailer's Muse, has a lot of history, and you even come in here, and it just feels yeah. cool, right? And especially at night. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Spooky. Yeah, it can be a bit spooky. Yeah. In fact, actually, though, they renovated the building about 12 years ago. It was even spookier before because they've made a lot of this very modern, right? Yeah. And before it was less modern and all brick and everything and not as many lights. It was really cool, but it's still cool. That's cool. And what is your favorite story in your book? What's my favorite story? Yeah, in the book. I would say it's a personal one. My favorite story is, um, and it's not featured on the website, it's only uh. in the book. It's about <laughs> Overlin Mansion in Burnaby, okay. um, which isn't very well known as a, you know, Highcroft Mansion. It is haunted and Cape uh, Sorry, is it Real Mansion? No, no. Anyway, there's other really super haunted mansions that are well known in that group. Yeah. But Overlin, and it's called Overlin because it looks over Lynn Canyon across the Sperard Strait. Oh, cool. um, is this old, old place. I think it was built in 1907 or 08. Um, it's now owned by an old folks home next door and they use the house for special events as well as for um, filming, as a filming location. They filmed paranormal in there, huh? Oh. <laughs> and, and I had the privilege of going on a ghost investigation, a paranormal investigation, two summers ago? Yeah, two summers ago there. And, um, Wow, I mean, stuff just kicked off right away. Um, it's very haunted. Um, when we were just setting up, there were banging noises and footsteps. Uh, when we were just having a little meeting before separating and going throughout the house, um, my colleague Marlene felt a, a cold spot. And we brought the Mel meter over, you know, the meter that reads temperature in EMF. And you could see the temperature just dropped on there. And it was a summer night. It was warm otherwise. And then um, we heard footsteps um, and all kinds of things. Uh, and we recorded the voice of a man in there who coughed. And then about three seconds later said, me. And we weren't sure what we picked up, but we definitely heard it on this camera, right? It, but there's no video of this guy, just the audio. And then a couple of months later, when we did the reveal to the lady who runs the house, she heard that and she said, oh, you recorded the coughing man. The lady told us that in the early 1900s, of a hospital for tuberculosis patients. So they figured he was one of them. So it's my favorite because I was there, I experienced these things, and it's a very cool, spooky old house.
And do you consider yourself one of the people that sense ghosts and stuff like that? No, I wish. <laughs> uh, I, I think we were chatting earlier. I'm yeah. about as um, psychic as, I don't know, a <laughs> brick wall. I'm not, I don't pick up anything like that. Um, I will occasionally go into a location, whether it's here or in an old place in the UK, and I'll go, yeah, I bet there's ghosts in here, and usually I'm right. But of course, when you go into an old place in the UK, let's say, odds are it's probably haunted anyway. So, but I do uh, work with people when we go investigating that uh, say they have some, they pick up on stuff. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what are your plans for future books? Um, I'll, I'll continue to expand on the Ghosts of Vancouver book. Um, this I is just, your first one, right? This is the first edition in paperback. Okay. Yeah, so I've had the book in the electronic copy, the Kindle version, for three years now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to have it in paperback. This is just it feels bigger. Yeah, it feels good to have a book in your hand, right? Um, but future editions, I have lots of other locations I want to do more, more research on uh, and just expand out different sections. And uh, maybe one day I'll do one on Victoria, but you know, working for a living kind of takes up a lot yeah. of time, right? So um, I do this in my spare time. Um, but yeah, I want to make it thicker and thicker and thicker. There's 20 plus more locations I could add, but I want to get more corroboration because you read stuff online about these places, and sometimes you wonder, well, are people telling the truth or are they just yeah. making up stories? That's so I, books. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I just need to do more research about a lot of different places. Um, for example, Alibi Room, just up the street here, yep. um, that's known to be haunted, but there's not a lot of detail about it. So I need to go in there and ask around, see if anybody will tell me the stories. And is there any place in BC that you want to go check out that? Oh in? yeah, probably lots. Um, <laughs> uh, Craig Dada Castle yeah, in, in Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. Um, I hear it's open to the public. I yeah. didn't know that. So I'd like to go there. I've I done a video on that one too. You do? Oh, yeah. cool. I, I haven't seen <laughs> that one. <laughs> um, and you mentioned Hatley Castle. Yeah, I'd Hatley like Castle. to go there. I know that's Royal Roads. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's lots of places I'd like to go that I still haven't been. Anywhere outside of Canada? Um, outside of Canada? To, yeah, you've been to London, for example. Yeah, um, my wife and I are originally from the UK. I was born there, but grew up here, and my wife is later so we go to Wales every year okay. um, I'm always looking for new new to me haunted pubs or castles those are my uh, yeah. favorite you know <laughs> I mean what's, what's cooler than a haunted castle or a pub right yeah. um, so there's some on my list we're going back in June for three weeks uh, there's some on my list to, to look at there um, and probably going back to some favorites in, in Wales um, there's a favorite place of mine called Marvin Park where there's an old um, an old manor house that's very haunted, and just up the way in the same area um, is a graveyard where my grandmother and grandfather on my mum's side are buried, oh. right next to an abbey, and the abbey's haunted. Oh, so wow. that's my favorite place. I like to go there and, and check things out. Yeah, that's cool. And um, there's a lot of ghost tours and a lot of ghost videos. As you yeah. Can see. yeah. So why did did you choose to do one? Uh, I like writing. I like, you know, I'm, a, I'm an adult educator, so part of what I do for a living is writing and editing stuff, textbooks, online courses, that kind of thing. I just really like writing. I like the creative process and then fine-tuning stuff. Um, and it's something that's, I think, more easy to do in, in my spare time. So, you know, at night I can go home and if there's nothing on TV or my wife's busy, I'll go, hmm, what can I write about? Or what <laughs> research can I do? So I, I just, I don't know what it is. I like videoing too, but I'm going to leave that to you. I, <laughs> yeah, I like the writing. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. It's just, it just grabs me. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And how can people find you? Um, through the website, ghostofvancouver.com. There's a contact me tab right there that sends me a direct message. Um, I'm trying to get people to write more on the blog. You know, um, a lot of people are shy though, you know, if they've had a ghostly experience. Um, a lot of people don't want everyone to know that because yeah. maybe they'll be judged as being crazy or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm always um, open to receiving stories. Uh, some of the stories in the book and on the website were sort of submitted to me by people who found the site uh, and wanted to tell their story. Um, one of them was the young gal who um, was doing a video shoot at the Century House and she had the experience 
with a ghost in the lady's bathroom, and that was a very cool story. Oh. And there's others too, but um, I love getting those. So if anyone has a real okay. life ghost story about a sort of a public location around BC or Vancouver, let me know. I'm not too into haunted houses though, you know. There's a lot of haunted sort of residential houses and apartments out there. And you know, it's, you it's don't really know what's real. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> and hey, I know these things happen and they continue to happen, but I'm more interested in kind of the public places where we can all go and visit, right? So you can say, ooh, this is And is there anyone that has inspired you to uh, keep you uh, yeah, I mean, my early sort of inspirations were some of the classic ghost story writers like Peter Underwood, the Englishman who died a couple of years ago, age 95. So I like to think he finally got to know whether or not we live after death. Or not. <laughs> but also, um, oh, what's the American fellow that used to do stories? He died recently as well. Anyway, just a lot of old school stuff. Um, I also like the TV show Most Haunted out of the UK. Okay. Um, out of all of the kind of ghost hunting TV shows, I I still like that one. They're still making them. You can see them on YouTube. Uh, of course, being English, <laughs> I like to see the, the cool old castles and locations that they go to. Um, so I find them inspiring. Um, they sort of indirectly inspired me to, to write the website and book, as well as Robert Gallick, who's a local author who wrote some of the first excuse me, books about ghosts of Vancouver and Victoria and DC. Um, I've never met him, but um, great books, uh, very okay. inspirational. So. And any last words that you have to say? Uh, <laughs> hey, thanks for um, following the site and the book. It's great to meet you. And um, yeah, uh, keep it up. Let's let's collaborate. Um, we were actually talking about maybe a ghost hat here. Yeah. Right? That we're trying, <laughs> we're that trying I, to find it. Yeah, <laughs> I heard a snippet that there's a ghost hat here in our cat here in Jail of Muse, but nobody seems to know. It's just funny because so. we both like cats. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, we both have cats. Yes, my wife and I have a cat <laughs> named Jerry. Aww. <laughs> and I got two cats. Oh, cool. So, so once yeah. you find that story, you got to find it. <laughs> yeah, if anyone has been to Jail of Muse or worked here and knows about a ghost cat in one of the stores, let us know. Apparently, yeah. there's a cat that sits on some steps, but we can't find it. Pretty cool. Well, thank you very much. Once again, do you want to give your contact info? Uh, Greg right. Mansfield, find me at ghostofvancouver.com and thanks for watching mm -hmm. and thanks for following. And if you have any stories, let us know. And get yourself a book. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mary. Great to meet you.